welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And I should call this one's Arlen's Kitchen <laughs> because this will be my first video in probably several uh, with me showing you what uh, uh, some of the goodies I make for our Christmas. A lot of them have to do with peanut butter and this one is no exception. <laughs> this is without a doubt one of uh, my family's favorite recipes, except for Chris, who does not like peanut butter, if you can believe that. Everybody else in the family pretty much loves peanut butter. So uh, anyway, I am gonna be making my easy peasy peanut butter fudge today. All you need are four ingredients. And here's the recipe if you wanna do a screenshot uh, or pause your computer and copy it down. There you go. Peanut butter fudge. And so the four ingredients that you need for this recipe are two cups of sugar, white granulated sugar, one half a cup of milk. I use whole milk. I've never used anything but whole milk, so I can't recommend anything else but whole milk. You can try it with something different and it might work out just fine. Uh, and then one complete container of jar of 16.3 ounces of Peter Pan peanut butter. Now I use Peter Pan, other people might use Jif or generic brands or whatever. I always use Peter Pan because I love Peter Pan in this recipe. I actually prefer Jif on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But for, for this recipe, and trust me, I've made it for 30 some years, Peter Pan, for me, is it makes it taste the best. So Peter Pan, peanut butter, and then marshmallow fluff, one seven and a half ounce container of marshmallow fluff. Now for those of you in the UK or in Australia or in other places, I hope that you can find something of this consistency or like this. I'm not sure what you guys have and I hope I'm not giving you a recipe that you cannot bring to fruition. But this is what we use here in the United States, marshmallow fluff. Okay, so that's it. And that's all it's gonna take. And it only takes three minutes to cook it once it comes to a boil. So let's get started. I wanted to just give you a hint as to what I do with my pans to make your fudge come out perfect every time. Let's move over here onto the other counter. Okie dokie, here we go. Uh, I wanted to let you know that I use a nine by nine inch pan. You know, we're gonna cook it on the stove. We're gonna cook the peanut butter fudge on the stove. And then we're gonna, we're gonna quick pour it into this pan. As you can see, I've lined it with a heavy duty aluminum foil, but you can also see that it is a square pan completely square corners. And that might just be a little hint for you guys. I, I have another pan I used to make it in that had rounded corners. And I finally went ahead and bought one with square corners just because I like the way the fudge looks better and that all the pieces of fudge look the same instead of looking like they have rounded you know, corners. Just my anal retentiveness as usual, so. But what I do is take a piece of aluminum foil. I had a friend give me this hint. Actually, it was the same friend that gave me this recipe, but I've tweaked the recipe a little, so it's kind of my own recipe now. It has been for many, many, many years. But anyway, uh, I line the pan with aluminum foil, and then I take just a stick of butter. This is just regular, real butter. And I take it and I wrap, run it all over the foil. into the corners. Okay. Make sure all the aluminum foil is covered. I don't usually do up the sides too much because it's really, don't, I don't have a problem getting the foil off. So what I'll do at the end is pour the peanut butter fudge in and then lift the whole foil out of the pan and put it on a cutting board and spread it out and then cut it that way. Instead of having to cut it in the pan and dig it out, this gives you the opportunity to lift the entire fudge out and put it on a cutting board and cutting it all. Okay, so just a little little tip. 
I'll be right back. We're going to get started at the stove. Okie dokie, here we go with my pot. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on oh, about medium high to start out with. And I take my regular whole milk here and put a half a cup of milk. in the pot. And I just add two cups of regular granulated sugar. Okay. Then all you do, like I said, cook this at medium, at about medium high, medium to medium high, and bring it to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, we're gonna let it boil for three minutes, okay? And I stir pretty constantly. You don't have to, you can walk away a little bit to begin with, but, uh, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. So I'll be back once we get to a boil. Okie dokie, you guys. That's been about three minutes. I'm gonna turn my heat way down, but I am gonna keep my pan on a little bit of heat because it helps me, I'm not as strong as Chris, he can whip this up quicker than me, but I'm not quite as quick as he is. Also another hint is to put your fluff in first, because it tends to not want to melt as quickly as the peanut butter part, so I always put, try to put the fluff in first, you know, to give it a good start, to start melting in there. So all you do, though, now that I've said that, is just, and I'm sorry that I don't have my camera on the other side of me here, but, sorry, excuse the squeaking, Chris is also moving furniture around downstairs, sorry about that. Uh, but all you do is add the two containers, the whole container of fluff, and you can see I already have the, the peanut butter kind of started to come out of there, out of the jar, because you do kind of need to work a bit quick, it's not that important, but I try to, and I use the whole jar. of peanut butter, okay? Then, you just start mixing. And by keeping the, the sugar mixture on the stove for just on a little bit of low helps the uh, marshmallow fluff and the peanut butter combine a little easier than you would, and it doesn't harden up so quick on you. I'm telling you, this fudge is foolproof, you guys. Honestly, it, I've never not had it work out. So I'm just going to stir my little heart out here for a little bit. And when it gets all stirred up, I'm going to take it over there and I'm going to put it in that pan. I need to get it all combined. Oy, oy, oy. Ladies who struggle with arthritis, you might need to have a your husband or your son or daughter or your grandchild there to help you because this is not for the faint of heart, I will admit. Okay, you guys can see that. It's already starting to harden up. I also try to scrape the sides to get all the marshmallow off the sides and get it combined. All right, let's scooch over here. And it is thick, as you can see, already. Okay, 
And then I just spread it out all the way to the corners. And hold your ears. I'm going to fix them to pick it up. And pound it on the on the counter. There we go. All right, I'm going to let it sit here until there we go. Boy, that was bright. Sorry, but I'm going to let it sit here till it cools. The granite helps it to cool down, and I'll be back when I'm ready to cut it and package up a little thing to take to my hairdresser. Shh, don't tell her. <laughs> All right, be right back. Well, I'll be right back for you guys. It'll be a while for me. <laughs> now, while we're waiting for the fudge to cool, I am just packing my hairdresser up just a little something. I just got her this little towel. Uh, it's just a tea towel, you know, so and that's her last name's initial. So I thought that would be just something to go with the fudge, you know. And this is the box that I got those ornaments in the other day. You know what? As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to add one of these to it. You know, why not? Give, us a, give it as a little gift. Okay. Oh, joy. Now, this is cute just like this. But I thought, I don't know, why don't I just do a little bigger bow on it? It doesn't have to be a funky bow. But I thought it would be cute just to, you know, do... This is glued on, so I've got to kind of leave that. But why not do just a pretty Christmassy bow? to make it a little bit more special, you know? Okay. And for goodness sakes, nothing can be easy here. Okay. Just pull this up. Go left over right. Okay, so there we go. Just a little something to make the box look a little prettier. Just a little token. I know it's not a lot, but it's a little token just to say thank you for everything that you've done for me this year and for helping me feel pretty, you know? Goodness knows I need that sometimes, but that's cute. And then I'll give her the fudge and this little tin, and that will be her gift. All right, all right, I'll be back. My fudge is still hot. <laughs> I brought my fudge over here just because it's cool enough that I can pull it out of the pan. So I just wanted to show you how I pull it out, see that? 
not quite cool on the bottom, so I'm not gonna cut it yet, but I just wanted to show you how easy that comes out of the pan, and then you don't have any pans to wash, you know? I'm put this right back down in my, under here, which is where it goes. And we're gonna wait a little longer for this to cool. I have a big knife, and I'll be back when it's ready Everybody to cut. Here I am, I'm back, and this is nice and cool now and ready to be cut. So I have my little tin, and I got myself some of these little paper doilies. These are a little large for this tin, but that's okay, I'm just gonna smush it down in there. It's okay. Okay. Now the way I cut my fudge is I go to the center, and I cut right down the center. I'm just eyeballing it, I don't measure it. And then I go to the center between where I just cut and the edge, and I cut right there. Then I go to this side and go to the center of between the middle and the, the side. And then I turn it and do the same thing this way. Kind of go to the center. And go to the center of that. I forgot to do two cuts. It cuts the other direction. Well, we'll finish this way first. Then go here. And then go to the middle of each one of these. this way. We need to go to the middle of every one. And that gives us perfect little squares of fudge. They're not perfect, but they're pretty close to perfect. Now, all I do is start filling up this little tin. And I'm trying to fit as many in as I can here. And I put a little piece of paper between each layer. I'm going to be able to get more than just two layers in, which is okay. It gives her about half a batch, I would say, or pretty close to it. Can we get one more? Yes, we can. Looky there. And then I will save that, and maybe we'll take it to the kids or something this weekend. I don't know. And then I just put one more little doily on and try to center it as best I can. Can't even see the paper, but that's it. Nice little tin of, of fudge. And then what I do with this is just put it in a All right, and that will do it. And I don't need a piece of paper on the top of ours. So there we go. All right, so there's my hairdresser's gift for tomorrow. I'm ready to take it to her. I'll be right back with some final, a taste test and some final words. Okie dokie, you guys, I'm back. And I feel really good about that little, uh, little gift for my hairdresser. I know she likes my fudge and she likes my caramel corn too. I don't know that I'm making that this year, but I didn't make it right now. So I know she likes the fudge though. So that'll work. <laughs> All right, I have one little piece here and I'm gonna try it. 
It's one of my favorite things too, I have to say, but I really try to avoid it, but I will taste, I'll, I'll sacrifice and I'll taste for you guys. All right, here we go. Mm. Mm. It is rich, but it is so moist, you guys. It is not dry, like crunchy at all. It's really good. Mm. I honest to goodness have never not had that work out. Really and truly, it works out like that every single time. Every single time, you cannot hurt it. But anyway, I hope you guys will give this a try. I know many of you have already and have told me so and that you love it. So I'm so happy that there's a recipe that, that I make that you guys love. Anyway, you do need a little drink afterward because it's so rich. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Woo! It's very rich. So, all right. So, let me go into my final words. I don't even know what's next. I do go get my hair done uh, tomorrow. So, I may do a car chit chat. I'm not sure. But we'll see. This will go up probably while I'm on my way to my hairdresser. So, she doesn't see it until after I'm already to her. <laughs> so, this might be a little bit. It might have gone up a little later in the morning than normally. So, but anyway, all right, let me uh, go into my final words and say, I hope that all is well with everyone. And for those of you who might be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, making the very, very best out of each day. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. And with all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye. I'm trying to find my recipe so I can hold it up for you one more time, so there we go. Peanut butter fudge, pause your machine and copy it down. I will try to have it in the description as well. But there you go. Peanut butter fudge. Foolproof. I promise. All right. Catch you next time, y'all. Bye-bye.